Listen, you came here? Yes. To, to see check if it we out? Can help. No, what, what do you mean? To see if we can help, but this is... Uh... Yeah. This poor woman. Wow. Rick Leventhal is the one reporting on the, the ground. Running. He's not able to hear me at this moment. Uh, but Rick... Just the, just the sound of a plane. Star jets, star jets. Star jets. All right. What, what are you guys doing right now? What's your, what's your assignment? What, what's your assignment? Help people. Are there a lot of injured? The, uh, the, the dust is still thick in the air. What, what that guy is covered with is, is this stuff that's all over the street. Just thick, soot, ash. Just came roaring down here in a huge cloud from the World Trade Center. You see, this, this. Are you able to talk? Can we just talk to you about what happened? I was that stairwell exploded. You were right there at the building? Yes, a lot of people trapped. A lot of people trapped. EMT. This guy needs help. Rick Leventhal is not able to hear me, but from his vantage point on the ground, I think it's not clear to him what's fairly clear I mean, to us, looks like here. our vantage point from the helicopter, that the to top of like Tower here. 1, One Can World Trade Center, has literally here? crumbled. I, I can't feel, guess right? how many floors, perhaps 30, perhaps 40. The itself is, what, I think 107 stories tall, Tower 1 and Tower 2, uh, one in the south end, one in the uh, north end. Uh, it appears that the plane, the first plane that hit, hit the one in the north end. Uh, that has the, uh, the restaurant, here? Windows in the World upstairs, and then the south towers appears to be the one that was hit uh, the second time. That has the observation deck. Uh, that is a uh, is a obviously popular tourist attraction uh, for, for for people. So clearly, as we see, a pandemonium. But uh, you know, the uh, John, the uh, FBI, and the uh, New York City Police Department have the Joint Terrorist Task Force. They have uh, obviously experience with this. They were able to solve uh, the others, and I'm confident, and we should be confident that. Let Let's go to Brian Wilson now. He is he's at the uh, in Washington. Brian, is there a report about the Pentagon? Well, I can't tell you about that, but I was just here in front of the Capitol, which, by the way, has been evacuated, and back toward the Supreme Court area, we just heard a low, muffled thud. It sounded like a small explosion. Sirens are going off around this city like you cannot believe, and just overhead a moment ago, something I have never seen in Washington in the 16 years I've been here, military jets are, uh, are now patrolling the skies over Washington, D.C. We'll try to find out more about that explosion, but it was a low thud, and I'm now seeing that there is a great deal of activity over toward the direction of the Supreme Court. All right. Back to you, John. Britt Hume is with us. Britt? Uh, John, I'm looking now uh, on one of our remote uh, uh, cameras here at a picture of the scene at the Pentagon. This is a picture uh, looking down Interstate 395, which is, you probably know, John, is a major thoroughfare in and out of Washington that is commuted, used for, by commuters every day in large numbers. And we're getting a sense that, uh, from a reporter out there at the scene, has just said that there's been another loud bang out there, whether that is an, a further explosion uh, initiated in an attack or whether it is simply a secondary uh, blast, a result of the continuing fire. But uh, the situation there at the Pentagon continues to evolve. We'll keep you posted. All right. Britt Hume in Washington, thank you. Our Rick Leventhal is on the ground in lower Manhattan where these scenes of chaos and utter confusion are just mind-numbing. Rick, uh, go ahead. Rick is not able to hear me, but this is the scene in Lower Manhattan where, where the upper Again, floors of the World Trade Park Center, Church. Tower 1, apparently have completely four, collapsed. Five blocks from the World Trade Center, and, and we were standing here when, when there was some sort of collapse or explosion, and everyone started running in this direction, Police officers, pedestrians, EMTs, everybody came running this way. I saw a woman pushing a, a baby carriage, running for her life, and right behind them was a huge cloud of billowing smoke and ash and debris coming this way. Uh, the smoke has obviously cleared somewhat. Ma'am, she's with DCPI. Can you talk to us for just a second? Bring us up to speed. 
Obviously, people have their hands full out here. It's not easy getting anyone to talk. Yeah, tell me where you were, what happened, what did you okay. see, what did you hear? First, I went on Canal Street, I saw the fire. I saw the two buildings, I'm thinking it was, a, it was a bomb because it's two of them. Anyway, when I got there, I tried to save people because I'm a doctor. When I tried to save people, in the moment we heard a big explosion coming down. Everything just went black. Everything came down, glass started popping. People got hurt, stuff went on top of them. And it was a big explosion and everything got dark, real dark, like snow. You can see behind me, all oh, this is not snow, it's, this is all from the building. <laughs> It was a terrible nightmare. Where exactly were you standing when this happened? I was standing right in front of the World Trade Center. So you were down the block here? And right you came there, in the middle. This way? Right, yeah. Everything. Did you get hurt at all? No, not me. Did you see anyone around you getting caught up in it? Yeah, we was, I was with the firemen. We, all, we got hurt. We all went inside to this dark. We was inside the building where everything happened. But we came out alive. What's the, your name? My name is Dr. Angel. Did, were you able to, to assist anyone before this happened? Yes, I did. I, I, help, I help a lot of patients. A lot of them. Well, there are a lot more people that need help they now. Need help, so if, yeah. you're, if you're capable, maybe you should. Uh... Um, yes, I'm going to go back. I lost my ID, but I try to go back. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot for All talking right. to us. Thanks. All right. We, uh, that's, that's what Rick Leventhal has for us down in lower Manhattan, where chaos and utter confusion reigns. This is clearly a national catastrophe. There will be some response from the White House. Let's go to Wendell Golder, who was traveling with the president in uh, Sarasota, Florida, and find out what the latest is there. Wendell? John, the president left Sarasota, Florida. Air Force One uh, took off just a short while ago, Mr. Bush returning to Washington to convene a meeting of his national security advisors, including the vice president, the heads of the CIA, the National Security Agency, and the FBI, and also New York Governor Pataki. It is unclear now whether that meeting will be held at the White House or elsewhere, given the explosion uh, just a, a short distance away from the White House on the other side of the old executive office building and the evacuation of the White House itself. Mr. Bush cut short a, a two-day trip here in Florida that was focused on education after the two attacks uh, on, on the Twin Towers in New York. He was briefed by his national security advisor, uh, Condoleezza Rice, who phoned him after the first attack. Mr. Bush was actually reading to some children when uh, the second attack occurred. Chief of Staff Andy Card interrupted him, told him about the attack. It was clear at that point we were dealing with terrorists. Mr. Bush cut short his uh, trip and flew back to Washington. John? All right, Wendell Goler, thank you. Just wanted to update you that some of the hospitals in New York are already at capacity, not accepting any new patients. There could be tens of thousands of injuries. Let's listen into what uh, Rick Leventhal is learning down in Lower Manhattan. We're lying down, and then I looked up and I saw the and I saw this huge plume of smoke and the tower just crumbling, and it and it just turned into a huge plume of smoke. And next thing you know, there's smoke in one tower, and that's what we're seeing right here. So, and obviously there's plenty, uh, the people are worried about the, the press agents and everybody else that went the other way is everybody wants to look this way. When you saw this collapse taking place, could you see if there were a lot of people on the ground near the building as it no, was happening? No, I was, I was further north than you were, but I was dead looking at 6th Avenue. The view, you see both towers as you come right. down 6th Avenue. Right. So, and then most of this fallout stops about four blocks back. Give me a look down this way, Pat. Uh, you know, it does sort of look like beyond a few blocks down, it, it looks almost clear. But it's anything but over here. I live at 25 Lawn Street, a couple of blocks from here. I'm all the time hanging out in the corner on the liquor store this morning. I saw the plane coming this way in the spot. It was factory directly to the building. Was this the was first plane or the second plane? Yes, it was the first plane. The second plane, is this no second plane. It was a bomb. Bomb in the building, not second plane. That was a bomb. Right. Who said the second plane? That's what we're told, the second plane, no, we saw it on television. Like All right, well, thanks a lot. Check, I, this is... In case you're just joining us, uh, this is the aftermath of a horrific event that began unfolding about an hour and 20 minutes ago. A jet plane slammed into the side of uh, Tower 2 of the World Trade Center. Then a few minutes later, another jet slammed into Tower 1. The second to Tower 1, I should say, the upper floors have collapsed. They're absolutely gone. Uh, I, was, I was in the restroom. There was a, a, a big shaking. Some of the ceilings collapsed. Looks like there was a fire in the elevator shafts. And... Um, 
Uh, just they, they brought everyone down and started bringing everybody down the stairs. So you came down from the 77th floor? 77th floor, down you the came stairs. down the stairs? Yes. What, what was happening around you? Was people screaming? No, or? no, people were pretty calm. <clears throat> when we got down to sixth floor, there was like another shake or another explosion. Everyone started panicking, but everybody was really calm, and the police and firemen were very helpful. Which of the two towers were you in? One, Trade Center One. All right. And when you got to the ground, then what? Uh, it's just like, it's like rubble and dust, like inches thick and like paper, uh, paper, uh, paper everywhere, and they just moved us out. How many people do you think were in the building on the floors that were affected? What I, do you I think? Say, I mean, I'm one one office out of 20 on that floor, so I have no idea. How, how far above you or below you was the uh, impact? I think it was up us, above us. I don't know how many floors. We saw it on TV, uh, but I don't know. I don't know. What's the first thing you thought when you heard it? I had, had to call my wife. Did you? Were you yeah. able to? Yeah, I, I got through a phone line. I called her. I'm talking to you because I'm hoping she's watching so she knows I'm okay. What's your name? My name is Matthew right. Gard. Folks, clearly America is under attack. We can only hope that it's over, at least for now. Our David Schuster is in Washington, where there have been one, perhaps two explosions at the Pentagon. David, uh, what can you tell us? John, I'm actually in our office here at the Pentagon, and according to counterintelligence sources, they confirmed that it was a plane that crashed into the south end of the Pentagon near the helipad. Uh, this is a route that... Uh, commercial aircraft flying into National Airport, which is just a few miles away. They take sometimes on final approach as they come to the airport. But again, intelligence sources, counterintelligence sources confirming that it was a plane that crashed uh, on the side of the Pentagon. Now, here in our Pentagon officer, producer Chris Wright, says that there was no uh, shaking of the building or even sounds. Of course, the Pentagon is built to withstand attacks, uh, perhaps like this one. Uh, but we are getting reports from eyewitnesses who were on uh, Highway 110, which is just uh, west of the Pentagon. One eyewitness claiming that he saw a U.S. Air 737 plane headed toward... All right, let's uh, listen in now to WTTG's coverage there outside the Pentagon. This is coming to you the, from the Washington, D.C. area. Okay, thank you. Hello? The, Pen the Pentagon, the world's largest office building, being evacuated. Uh, Britt Hume, our Washington managing editor, is still with us. Uh, uh, Britt, go ahead. Well, John, what you're seeing there is that is the uh, interstate uh, or the Route 395, used to be known as the Shirley Highway, that comes up into Washington. As I mentioned earlier, a familiar commuter route. And what you're seeing there are the military personnel evacuating the building. Uh, some, as you know, as we noted just a minute ago, or as you could see just a minute ago, were on the run. Now, we have, John, from, uh, from sources, intelligence sources, what may be a claim of responsibility here. Now, I want to caution you before I note this that at times like these all sorts of uh, claims are made so this needs to be treated uh, with some caution but if some intelligence sources are now saying that the democratic front for the liberation of palestine is claiming credit in the meantime however the israeli government is said by sources to believe that osama bin laden is responsible for the operation and those two organizations are related but they are not exactly the same i suspect john before all is said and done we will hear more on that aspect of all this but obviously that is something that we're all keeping an eye on to see if some kind of uh, authenticatable or, or uh, credible claim of responsibility for these astonishing attacks uh, is made that we can, we can believe. Again, you're looking again at the, uh, at the, uh, at the interstate road, that, Inter Route 395, that runs down past the Pentagon. Uh, that is just, of course, across the river from, from Washington, D.C. And the smoke you're seeing is indeed from the area out by the helipad, which can be seen by drivers as they go by the Pentagon and, uh, and uh, you're seeing the smoke uh, from it. It appeared from some pictures we saw earlier, John, of the building itself, that while it was clearly damaged, and in the area where the hit was uh, very uh, badly damaged, uh, it did not look like the damage to the overall building, which is massive, was all that extensive. Right, well, that is uh, perhaps a touch of good news. Britt Brit Hume, thanks very much. Let's go back to our man in Lower Manhattan, Rick Leventhal, who is, again, not able to hear us, but uh, trying to bring you from the ground the perspective of, of what he witnessed, felt, and heard. And I think Rick is not clearly aware as we are that the upper floors of Tower One of the World Trade Center have collapsed completely. And, you know, it felt like a bomb hit or a plane hit or something like that. But the whole floor a plane was did hit. A plane did hit. Yeah, and then we looked out the window, all we saw was debris. 
all over the place. But we thought the building was going to topple over. It was going so. Well, one of shaky. them did. One of them did. We were in town one. We made it out.